This is Fanspeak, a weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests. Uh, we're going to have a really good show here. we got a very interesting guest, an interesting project, and, of course, we'll have some news as well. Uh, we appreciate everybody's coming over here. I see we already have Nick and Joshua in here and uh, George as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, hitting that share button is really, really helpful to us, and we hope you guys do that. Uh, we also have all our links down below, particularly to our Fanspeak page, as well as getting in touch with me. If you want to be on the show as a guest, uh, just go ahead and contact me at my Facebook or Twitter, or if you wish to be on the fan edition of the Jordan Accorded, you can contact me there as well. Uh, so uh, here on Fanspeak today, of course, we have a little bit different format than our day-to-day, -day, uh, so we might as well get right to it, guys. Uh, so let me first come over to my panel and say hello. Well, hello, Brad, man. You got yourself, uh, the handyman is underway and starting to move along. And uh, how It are you is starting to move, yeah. Day? It is starting to move. I'm doing, doing good, that? doing good. Uh, started to ink the cover uh, that we're going to be giving away to a lucky backer Tuesday at midnight. So uh, if you go over and back the book, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll put a link to IndieCron, because we are on IndieCron now, finally. Uh, I was a little late to the party, but uh, I was there. I'm there now. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, uh, check it out. Back the book. You can win a cover Tuesday at midnight. So, yeah, dude. Sweet, the dude. original artwork, the full artwork. Yeah, so... And uh, keep in mind, guys, that uh, uh, the link he just dropped here to uh, uh, IndieCron, of course, but you also can go over to Pencil for Life, and he does some really cool streams with some interesting people. Uh, your crew is a little bit different than one we have over here, but it's a fun crew, so uh, <laughs> you guys should go check it's it out. It's an interesting crew. Yeah, it is yeah. a bit different, though. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, but for me, Brad, it's a beautiful sunny day. I don't have any coffee, though. I don't have any coffee. I do have my wife sitting next to me, and uh, I do. I love well, her very much. Well, she should wake you up. I, just I give her a little pinch. A, a little pinch, yeah. I'm kind of wondering if she oh, yeah. might make me coffee. She's she's not paying oh, attention. Oh wow! I think she's ignoring. <laughs> Here it's snowy and rainy. She's she's saying she just said no, never. All right, fine. Uh, let me move on here and uh, say hello, of course, to the Dalai Lama. How you doing today, man? I'm doing fantastic as always. All right, you ready for the show today? We got we got a lot of work to do in a short time, so. Oh, oh we're gonna rapid fire this. Yep, absolutely. And, of course, we're also joined by our guest, Gil Rivera. How you doing, Gil? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you, Chester. Thank you all for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, man, happy to have you. It's a really fun-looking project, and you're doing real well, too. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you a little bit of a push here today because um, it, 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 we're going to talk about that in a moment, but it is a fun project. Now, we've actually already uh, talked about your project here on the show. Uh, on I think it was uh, during a, a Comics News Today show. Uh, but uh, we did look at it, and we all thought it was really cool looking. It's very... Um, it's almost nostalgic in a way, but uh, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Uh, of course, uh, the first thing we need to do, as we always do with every fan speak, is we must have, must have, from the chairman himself, his lessons in life. So, Mr. DeWolf, are you ready today, sir? a matter of fact, I'm, I'm even going to white box you. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm even going to do that. So... You are Whoa. Five in, in, in charge. The actual white boxing. Yeah. I don't I don't know how that sounds any anyway. So we need to make sure that we keep hold of your humanity. You know, we see now Captain Marvel in this latest iteration. She starts out thinking she's a Cree. And then through the story, she learns that she's human. And that makes humanity that much more important to her. And the protection of Earth and all the humans uh, is vital, right? Because of that, the way she looks at everyone else due to what she knows about herself and her humanity. This is a common theme. And we see this throughout cultures a lot of time. What this means to, as we see other people and holding on to our own humanities. You see, Wolverine oftentimes is uh, portrayed with that instinctual beastly attribute though on the outside of course he looks human he acts more beastly on the other ha hand you have the beast the outside looks bestial and like an animal and with less humanity but with his high intellect he often even makes uh, quotes about what it means to be human in the human condition 
And this is very important as we go through the things that are going on in our culture today and what we are going on here within Comicsgate, independent comics movement. You see, soldiers throughout history have had troubles with what they have to do and what they have to go through and and the, the links that they do uh, go to, to through uh, the combat and how they treat other people. You know, they have to kill them. They have to take care of business. And that weighs on them. And so what has happened is armies have told them that's okay because those other people are a problem and sometimes they're not even really as much of a person as you are. That happened with the uh, American troops uh, as they looked at the Japanese and all the more so with the Nazis, right? As they were doing what they were doing against the Jews. They completely dehumanized the opposition so that they could do what they would do to them, treat them inhumane. And in treating them inhumane, they were not treating them human. They were not being humane themselves. And so they lost part of their own humanity. Even without war, we see this when in certain cultural aspects where people t uh, thought that the Irish and made fun of the Irish immigrants as they were coming over and they were, were portrayed as lesser than other people too, less human. And so those around them treated them bad and they were also less human. And this is important as we go on today because we have a cultural concept where people on the left are looking at the conservatives. They're looking at comics gate members and they're calling them things such as Nazis and racist and all these labels, which reduces that person's humanity level. Oh, they're lesser than us. And so we can treat them bad. And we've seen some terrible treatment to those people. And of course, on the other side, we know that we're on the right. We're good. We're trying to treat people with respect. And so the other side, the left, looks less than human to us. And they're not even acting in their own humanity that when we use our own labels such as SJW and the like that we still respect the person and allow that person to speak and look at what their opinion is don't just immediately label them you're an SJW stop for a moment let them speak let them be human for a moment and so in that regard you maintain your own humanity and though we may not all look pretty on the outside we can have the intellect that the beast always puts forward and can continue protecting everyone and protecting our community like of course Carol Danvers learned she has to because she has humanity after all I rolled my eyes <laughs> so in that regard maintain your humanity treat others with respect and uh, even if they are not acting humane towards others but of course that's just what I'm saying what are the fans saying welcome to fan speak all right. Thank you very much, DeWolf. Uh, words of wisdom, indeed. Uh, and we, of course, uh, can see the, the analogy very, very clearly uh, from uh, uh, the other side, particularly, because uh, we got a couple articles we'll deal with later uh, that uh, deal with exactly that. Uh, on, uh, you know, sh surprisingly even. Uh, but of course, before that, we're going to jump right in here and talk to Gil. So, uh, uh, Gil, you ready? We're about to jump into this, man. Already, let's do this. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, present uh, everybody uh, with uh, the um, uh, with your project here. <clears throat> I'm going to start on Inicron, uh, but I'm going to also come over and share with you guys. So you can see what's going on. Obviously, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? And uh, <clears throat> we're going to jump right into this. And uh, uh, so uh, here we see we're on Inicron. Uh, of course, uh, I just came over to the uh, actual page that's been set up here. Uh, see, we got uh, Night Stalker 1 and 2. You got yourself some uh, images here. You got some uh, creator details. You got a nice little elevator pitch and a synopsis, uh, which is, this is really kind of fun. I, I wrote these for the uh, uh, Tales from Beyond the Gate. Uh, that was, it was fun to do that. Um, and uh, But uh, it's also very handy because uh, even though we have a nice bit of information here for the thing, we can just go ahead and click right here. And over we come to Indiegogo itself and the page. Boom, here we are, dude. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to be scrolling through, and you go ahead and uh, walk us through it, man. Sure, sure, okay. <clears throat> All right, well, Night Stalkers, basically, it's my... It's my love letter to all the um, 80s and 90s action movies I grew up with. Uh, I love Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, um, the grindhouse movie kind of style with the over-the-top violence and stuff. Mm. So 
when I was make, when I was kind of a Night Stalker, I wanted to combine my favorites. Um, I love anti heroes. I love vigilantes. Um, you know, some of my favorites have been the Punisher, Batman. You know, Judge Dredd, Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. And so when I when I did the series, I wanted to I wanted to have a, a legacy theme. I wanted to have um, an action adventure story with um, with superhero, not super, but you know, um, comic book elements in it. The guy with the cool suit and all that. Yeah. And um, so yeah, that's where we are. So basically, it's um, Night Stalker is about former uh, Force Recon Marine Javier Ray, who um, after high school he graduates. After he graduates high school, he uh, joins the Marines, like in the tradition, like all of his, all the males in his family do. And he joins and he tries out for the special forces and um, he ends up, he ends up um, scoring high enough on the trials that he gets, he gets in. And while he's in there, he goes on a bunch of black ops and clandestine missions all over the world. And um, on one of the missions, something happens and he's left for dead. And he gets imprisoned in, in a third world country, mm. and so the government, so the government denies any knowledge and all that. So he's he's basically he's missing in action. And uh, Winchester, which is the the old man in the, the on the cover, he's the big guy in the back. He's the he's the original Night Stalker, and um, he finds out what's going on with the situation and all that. And one of his last missions as the Night Stalker, because he's getting too old to do it, he frees this guy Javier out of, uh, out of that third world prison. And while they're doing it, um, he Javier gets, gets wounded pretty bad. And, um, <clears throat> they, they, they make it out of there, they escape and he's eventually, he's brought back to his health and all that. And he decides to help Winchester by taking his place as a night stalker. So that's where the, the legacy theme and all that come in. Cool, man. No, well, that was straight up and clear. Thank you. Good interesting information. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's boom, kind of funny right? because while he was saying that, it kind of reminded me of the Count of Monte Cristo with the old man in, in way, the yeah. prison. Yeah, so, a little bit, yeah. So it's the Punisher meaning the Count of Monte Cristo. That's how I'm framing <laughs> it in my mind. Is that a little Rambo? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. right, right, little Rambo. I think the the first thing that's coming to my mind, actually, by looking at your page and listening to that is I, I want to throw this over to Brad. Uh, because uh, your style is uh, one that Brad likes, actually. Um, he does, uh, Brad does similar type of uh, styling. I, I know he does other things too, but uh, you do this kind of style, Brad, uh, as well. And uh, tell us what you think, dude. Um, okay. Uh, I'm liking the energy you have in the pages. Mm. The energy is good. Uh, and I like how you're using it. Uh, I kind of like that the panels read really well. Uh, which is good. Um, some of the backgrounds are a little bit plain, but that's okay. You know, uh, I like the way, you know, God, like I said, the energy. So I, I have like four or five guys in my shop who would, who would read this book in a heartbeat, no problem, uh, and buy it every week. Um, you know, but um, oh, you yeah. know, I could always criticize art, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that to you today. Uh, I do like your backgrounds, though. Not a lot of guys can draw really good backgrounds. Uh, and your cityscapes, like you got some pencil ones down here at the bottom. Really nice, yeah, dude. Really they're nice. dope. Yeah. So yeah, uh, get props, right dude. That's beautiful. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. I yeah. want to see uh, that um, fully that, inked, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That, that big. Yeah. <laughs> that's that big a one. Fair, Once that's right. done inked. That's a lot of and work. What kind of, <laughs> and what kind of ink do you use, Gil? <clears throat> Uh, I use um, I use India ink. I have a, mm -hmm. I have a, a, a maps a, a one hundred two uh, quill, and um, I also use um, the um, the Pentel uh, the brush pens. Mm -hmm. No, I see. That's I use those as well. Yeah, no, you're doing a decent job, man. Yeah, um, no, I, props fact, to you. Do you have this finished ink uh, cityscape that we're looking at right here? Do you have that done? Or at least a larger version for us that you could share with us. Um, I don't. I, I I'm just 
it's funny. I mean, not funny, but I just uh, I'm moving my studio around because I just got juried into a um, an art gallery out here in in Virginia, oh, okay. and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the only guy that does um, comic book sequential art, so it, it should be kind of fun. And right sure. now, right now, I'm moving some stuff back and forth, so I don't have that original on hand right now. But um, yeah, are you freehanding all your backgrounds in the panels and not using a ruler? Uh well when I when I lay down I do use a ruler like for the uh, for the grid and all that but mm -hmm. when I when I actually go into to ink I I like to kind of have just just kind of like that rough kind of look like you know the old okay. um the old Eastman and Laird Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. how they had yeah no I kind of how it was all just I was just thinking Ninja Turtles actually <laughs> yeah it, yeah it has it has that. Uh... Old school '90s indie feel, almost. Yeah, you know, no, the, so. yeah, the real the turtles Russell. too, not the TV cartoon kids show. Of the actual, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Layer that, you know. Yeah, because honestly, Kevin Eastman, you know, I've met him before. He's a great guy. He's a really nice guy. Uh, but you know, his artwork is 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 rough. And when people see it for the first time, they're like, "Oh, that wasn't what I was expecting." You know, so yeah, I mean, it's cool though. But it has I that like '90s, yeah, yeah, '90s indie style. So. You know, yeah. Oh well, cool. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the. Yeah, no problem, dude. Ooh, pick me, pick me. Go ahead, dude. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we talk about art a lot, and you guys just went over it. But you know, for me, well, I am still dying for some story. Yeah, I want, I want some writing. I want some story. I want something that, that uh, the any of course the art helps to portray that but that story really does actually uh capture me bring me in and gets me interested in, in the in the characters you know all of american american what am i talking about human history has been about storytelling and foremost is the fact that i've got something that's got action it looks superhero like yeah but it's it's it, it goes back to that um old comics to where you know green hornet and stuff like that where these guys are vulnerable they don't have superpowers but they they're armed and they're dangerous and they're ready for action i think that's mm -hmm. cool um i haven't seen a lot of that well in the, in the superhero genre of marvel and dc we haven't we haven't seen that much you know image comics with spawn and everything else so here you you're here we have <clears> that we go back to that uh, some some gritty gritty action that's cool to see mm -hmm. yeah no, definitely it's cool. Like I said, we looked at this before and we were grooving on it. Uh, so yeah. you know, it's it's cool to have you here to talk to you about it. Uh, I guess I have a, I have two points I would interject here. One is uh, this is a fifty page full color story, which is cool. Uh, oh, nice yeah. that mm -hmm. we have right up the top there. We know exactly how big it is. <clears throat> and there is a question here from the chat <clears throat> from uh, Air Kicks. What's the backstory on the no Night Stalker? And yeah, I mean, you just missed it. Well, no, he just gave, he gave us a, a layout of how the current Night Stalker is in place. But uh, maybe the question is more of obviously there is this thing that is the Night Stalker, and it's a legacy character. So how did it start? <clears throat> right, right. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it started with uh, with that guy Winchester. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see on the on the on the cover that guy that guy right there behind him that's he's the original he's like the the first night stalker but he um his story is 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 pretty pretty complex and long too but basically uh his dad was um during like during like the second world war and stuff like or a little earlier than that his dad was like a uh he was kind of known as like the legendary soldier kind of he was like uh he wasn't a superhuman but he was just a really a really um uh, like a superior, you know, soldier, special forces kind of guy back in, in the day. And he was setting up a lot of the, uh, the, the special forces and all that stuff. Right. And he was, he, so his dad was a big guy. He's and, and Winchester's pretty big. I'd say he's about six, six, about, you know, like two, two seventy five. He's a big guy. Um, he's a freaking beast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I want to mess with him. <laughs> So, so what ends up happening is um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still you – know, I kind of have it figured out, but I'm still kind of creating it as I go. But basically what happens is his dad um, – his dad um, – during World War II, he ends up – he ends up – his unit ends up getting getting taken down by, by, uh, by some Nazis. And so his, his – basically his whole mission after that was like a revenge kind of thing. He wanted to get revenge for his father – 
and all this. So when he was 16 with Winchester, he was 16. He's a big guy. He's like 6'6", six, six, like, like I said, 275. So he, so back then he was able to kind of lie and, and uh, say he was 18 when he was really like 16 years old to get into the military and all that. Mm. And, and so he goes in there, he gets in there and he excels and uh, he's a big, he's a big, strong guy. So he excels pretty quick. He gets into special forces and he works his way up until he becomes a, uh, an officer as well. And he's got his own unit. And uh, he's got his own, like, his own alpha team. They go in there and they do rescue missions or whatever. And it's kind of like, you know, you know, like the unit in, like the unit in Predator with Schwarzenegger and all those guys. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that. It's kind of one of those, you know, um, one of those alpha teams like that. They go in there and um, they do special missions and stuff. And so what happens is um, um, they're, they're going on, they're, they're doing their thing. Uh, I, I don't want to give it all away because I do plan on doing a series on on him eventually. Yeah, but um, something happens, and he has to he has to basically like um, he's pretty much forced out of his own unit by by one of the guys that he 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 trained, and so he still has this you know he still has this kind of this this drive to kind of help and and do something. So he starts, he starts, he becomes a vigilante, like an empire city and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's taking down organized crime and all this stuff. And then, um, like I said, he just, he just, he does it for so long. He gets, he gets, uh, he just gets too old and he can't do it anymore. So that's where, um, Javier, the, the latest guy comes in. Oh, that's cool, dude. There um, you go. It's nice to have a good solid, uh, uh, I usually use the word cosmology. Uh, but it's it's good to have that that foundation underneath because you can grow from that. Um, I do have a question on, uh, on a side question. Now I know you spelled it differently, but uh, of course there are several Night Stalker Night Stalkers. Uh, Kolchak comes to mind, which is completely unrelated to what you're doing. Uh, but um, I'm curious, uh, you making that decision to use the name Night Stalker, even though you spelled it N I T E, uh, knowing that there are several Night Stalker things from other com- a comic book specifically, um, uh, uh, making that decision. Uh, um, uh, why did you decide to do that? Uh, well, because that that's been the name I, I've, I've had since uh, I first came up with a character back in the day, and it, it just it just suits the story, right? I, I do have I do have a couple of other options, like just in case if um, the the real reason I was kind of having uh, issue not issues, but just having. Uh, I'm not sure about what I wanted to name it was because, you know, obviously because of the real, the real, the serial killer and all that stuff. And um, that's true. There's another reference. I was like, I was like, you know, he's uh, this, this guy, Javier, he's Hispanic, you know, Night Stark, all this. I don't want it to be too many, you know, um, coincidences. <laughs> so, uh, so I said, you know what? And, and also I love, I love uh, um, the Watchmen as well. And I love how, you know, how Night Owl's name was, it, Night Owl was spelled like that. And I yeah, always thought that was yeah. kind of cool. So I said, you know what? Let, let, let me see. And I played with it, and I think, I think this is the only one that I can I can get on. Um, like when I was when I was trying to get the domain names and stuff, oh, this I is see. the only one that yeah. worked. I you know what I mean? All the other ones, all the other all the other versions and interpretations of Night Stalker with the N I G H T was a. Uh, was taken so no <laughs> oh, yeah i see i see uh, yeah no uh, it's totally cool i'm just curious because uh uh you know some the most there's so many good names taken of course but uh this one is just nice to, i mean in every media there's something and you even mentioned the serial killer uh and there's this night sucker there's so much stuff around it it's uh it, it is a little bit uh, more muddier field to have to move through uh but uh i guess the yeah. other question i had w- w- for myself is um um, uh, you chose Javier. Now I know, uh, with my, uh, I write things, I write, uh, I write a lot of stuff. And recently I've been writing some comic book stories, which is really cool. Uh, but, uh, I noticed when I was, uh, just writing up my stories, uh, for the tales from beyond the gate. Um, and I was started talking to the artist to get, to get the, uh, pa- panel set up and the page and the story done. Uh, they would, uh, they'd all ask me, well, I think all of them asked me the same question. What race is, uh, is the person? Because I hadn't even really thought about it when I was writing it. Um, so did did this just come kind of come around organically, or, or or was there a purpose behind you going with uh, Javier? Because uh, I know me personally writing that I just 
it never even comes in my head uh, until someone says you need to we need to know what they look like right which makes sense um, so what was the uh, what was the process uh, in coming up to choosing a I'm assuming Mexican Puerto Rican Dominican uh, American I mean, what's his uh, what's Javier's heritage here Spanish yeah he's he be uh, Hispanic Hispanic Spanish I see um, uh, well it, it was it was uh, just just because uh, I just want to kind of change it up, kind of how you know how McFarland did with Spawn back in the day. He made he made him um, you know black, um, which totally I, I think it just adds to the character like yeah. um, something different. I think yeah. it, it's something different. You know, you can do you can do it like you know like it's different in the way that you know they they dress. You know the kind of uh, you know the kind of uh, cars they have, the the furniture in their house. So it's um, I think it just kind of gives it. And not me being Hispanic myself. Um, I was, oh, well, um, go. okay. Yeah. You know, I was kind of, I was kind of thinking like, okay, if I was making an action movie, uh, <laughs> who would I, who would I cast? And so I said, you know, I get it. Uh, I get it. You know no, what I mean? And, yeah, no, um, absolutely. I get it. Um, and, and to be fair, uh, the Latinos need more superheroes anyway. We do need some more uh, cool uh, sure do. Latino superheroes. And of course, Brad knows well, this because Brad has the handyman who is, uh, the Mexican John Wick. Latino. Yeah. He's, you know, he's nice. a Mexican John Wick. It's very specific. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. It but we're, true. we're here to promote Gil's book, so we are. We are. I'm just yeah. making the mef- yeah, uh, reference yeah. that I've seen several it's true. Uh, it's people true, yeah. on that route, and I think it's a good idea because uh, now this isn't the actual. We need diversity, which we hear from the other side. I'm saying ah, I think we do need a few more uh, cool uh, Latino superheroes because there's the you know we have a lot of the other ones, but there's not. I mean, try to think about how many cool Latino heroes we have. We have. Diablo, uh, who is a really minor character in DC, and uh, mm-hmm. he was one of the cooler part of the movies, right? Uh, we have uh, <coughs> American Chavez. Um, oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry, sorry. So I'm going to interject right yeah. here because of that. And I'm going to say, I also like the fact that you chose the Latino aspect of this because he's also a Marine. And, you know, being around a lot of military, military is very full of different types of peoples Mm -hmm. uh, it's a way for for so many different people who are you know at the bottom uh they 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 don't come from a background of of riches or whatever and that when we see that when the hispanic culture and uh, in various uh, asian cultures even and black and whites as well and so they go into the military because it's a way for them to serve they're they're patriotic and they also get training and they better themselves. Yeah. And here you had to take that aspect of the diversity that is all within the American military oh, yeah. and then pluck one of those members out and say, all right, now you're, you have got a bigger mission. That's, that's cool. It is. Yeah. No, if you want to see the quilt that is America, go look at a military unit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but now, and I think also it just comes down to uh, Gil here, uh, writing what he knows. I mean, uh, I get that. And, and, and that's pretty. Scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know Mexican drug dealers then? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can step out. You can step out your, of yourself too. Uh, yeah, of That's course, true. I mean, yeah, I'm just playing. It, yeah. it is. Uh, it is an easier path to write what you know. I mean, that's the standard rule. As our, of course, I know Gil's doing the writing, and he has someone else doing the. I mean, he's doing the art, and he has someone else doing the writing. But still, you yeah. do what you know, right? I mean, and uh, oh wow, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. You got a good point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, now, uh, I, I, we have to ask the question, and we ask this from everybody, when did this ca- character become a real thing? I mean, how long ago was this? Was this a high school time? or I mean, Because, uh, you know, what, how long has this character been gestating in your mind, is my question, I guess. Oh, man. Uh, gee, that, that's... A, that's uh, honestly, it's been... I gotta say, it was like right after... Um, uh, the 1989 um, Keaton Batman. When I went, I went as a kid, uh-huh. and and I had I had the the Toy Biz, the brand new release, the the black the black uh, costume Batman. Um, do you guys remember that? I'm, I'm sure y'all do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And uh, I, I I had I had one. I went to my cousin's house. My cousin was the uh, you know the cousin that has that has all the toys, all the cool toys. I'd go over there and play with him, and. Um, his my little cousin he was he was maybe like 
one and a half, two. He was in the room with us. We're playing, doing our thing. And um, I'm looking for my for my Batman figure and I can't find it. And my little my little cousin's got it. He got it in his mouth. He's been chewing on it. And I no, I pull it off. And he had he had perfectly like bitten off the ears. It was so funny. Like the ears were like munched off. You know, I was mad at first and all all, you know, going all crazy. Um, but then I got home and um I was just kind of looking at it for a while and uh I just kind of got an idea. Um I basically kind of like I used the little fingernail clippers and I I I I clipped off the the little last bit of the ears that it had to kind of smooth it out. Mm-hmm. And um I just kind of I just I, I got a black like a black sharpie or a black big ballpoint uh, or a big marker and I just kind of cu- uh colored in the the yellow the yellow bat sign and all that stuff and I just kind of started coming up with an idea you know some of, of a new character kind of, of of my own so that's cool dude you did that off an action figure uh there's actually a whole <laughs> you know, there's a whole subculture of people yeah. who do that kind of thing actually i love mm-hmm. watching those videos in youtube those guys taking models and and adjusting them to their and bending them to their will it is really cool actually uh that's an interesting way it started though that's, that's a cool story dude you should tell that more often i think I uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably will this is actually my first time actually nobody's ever asked me that so that that's kind of cool that you uh you asked that so oh, thanks yeah. that's that's a good story dude um and especially <clears throat> coming out of an action figure so uh you know uh, you you did the uh, uh inks and uh, the pencil and inks for this uh book and you did the coloring for the first one you were telling us so um you know when did you start as an artist man where where, where, where are you coming out of i mean obviously you uh you can uh, do uh, uh style and you also can do really a really tight line work like we see here in this uh the cityscape which is absolutely gorgeous um so where, where are you coming from on that dude uh, how long have you been doing uh been involved in art uh well i've been doodling all my life basically my mom was always um real um arts and crafty she always made our costumes and was always you know, decorating the house and all that. And I remember when I was, when I was, I was like, I was like in kindergarten, I was um, doing some homework, um, um, some homework. And my mom was helping me do the drawing. Like she, she, she drew a cow and I thought it was like the coolest looking cow ever. I was like, Oh my God, you know, my mom, <laughs> my, my mom, my mom draws so cool, you know? And I was like, <laughs> so, so that kind of wanted, that kind of grew that interest in me to want to start to draw. And I started drawing. And then, you know, eventually I got to the point where I was like, one day I'm going to be better than my mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, so I, I went to the, um, to the, to my, um, elementary school, li- uh, the library. And I found, uh, how to draw the Marvel way with Stan Lee and oh, John Buscema. Yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. again. And so, so yeah, dude, I rented, I, I got, I checked it out. I, I, I just started just diving into that. And, um, uh, after that, it was just a lot of a lot of just self taught. I'd got, I got the anatomy books and all that stuff, and um, just kept going with it. No, that's just cool, kept man. going with it, you know. And and now and now what I do is I'm I'm a graphic designer now, so you know I, uh, I do all right. logos and all that stuff. But this this is my passion, my 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 comic books and my drawing. That's cool. You got one, dude. Um, uh, now I yeah, see you got a character here, and it's uh, yeah, it's called the Dynamic Setsuki. Uh, now, uh, why did you decide to go with Setsuki? Why, why, why did you choose this name? Setsuki. Um, Setsuki. It's yeah. Setsuki. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, it, trust my pronunciation it, on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like it, mine better. <laughs> uh, when I came up with the character, my my friend uh, was. Um, my my friend was half Japanese, and his mom used to get all these little um, like dolls and all this stuff. Um, he had he had him in their living room, mm-hmm. and I remember um, uh, he had this. Uh, they had this little set. It was like this little cute looking, like these chubby, you know, uh, um, uh, Japanese girls in kimonos, and they, they had like the, had the, the the white the porcelain skin, but they had one had a red outfit, one had a blue outfit, mm-hmm. and um, I was kind of just coming up with ideas, and, and you know, sometimes inspiration comes in like crazy, you know, out of nowhere, and I was like. Uh, the very first time I was like, that's kind of what I kind of was thinking about for the, for the Ninja girls, which is, excuse me. Um, Setsuki is the, is one of the, one of the sisters and there's another one. And uh, her name is Midori. And they're basically the, like the ultimate assassins for their dad. Who's the Yakuza boss. So you got the name off of a doll. 
No, no, no. Uh, my, it was just my friend. We we're kind. Of, we we're trying to come up with some Japanese names, uh-huh. and he just kind of threw, he threw that out there. He threw the name Setsuki and Midori, and I was like, I kind of like it. You know what I mean? Oh no, it's cool. It, it's very archaic. Um, it's not something you would see uh, uh, someone in Japan having right now, uh, but that actually adds some coolness to it. I think. No, oh, cool, cool, awesome, awesome. I I, I never knew what it meant. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to see the kanji, but uh, I don't know. Would it be a good guess on that? Baby, setsuki no imi ga dou desu ka? What do you think it means? Nah, yeah, she, you have to see the kanji. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter anyway. It's it's cool. Setsuki. 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 Tabun. Yeah. So yeah, tabun. Oh, top of top. Uh, she she thinks it probably means ocean moon. Because Suki oh, okay, is definitely okay. moon, uh, but she's. Uh. I'm down with ocean moon, man. Yeah, she's that's, trying that's, to figure that's... it out. Yeah, but yeah, top. Uh, I mean, Suki is definitely moon. So, uh, but ocean moon is probably a fair bet. Or seaside moon or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a cool name. I like it. I was just curious because it's so it's not normal. It's not a name you would see actually, uh, but uh, it's cool though. I like the sound it of sounds, it. Sounds like a princess name from the yeah, no, it does, area. doesn't it? Yeah, and it's a very it's a very constructed name too. It's not uh, some people have names that are just things, right? This is a constructed name. I mean, things were put together to make it. So, uh, but I think it sounds really cool. Sorry about that whole. Uh, for an interlude i apologize but uh, <laughs> it's just a cool sounding name i like uh, it that was weird i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no it's cool man thank you no i appreciate it <laughs> yeah. but seaside moon or uh i think it was her final decision on the matter seaside moon okay cool cool yeah. awesome um, See, now, now you can make stories out of the seaside moon <laughs> there you go there you go you gotta use that element yeah, you use that element yeah. Use that element Put a moon somehow. on the back of her outfit or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you yeah. know, um, uh, Denali's point is very good. It actually does sound princessy like. Actually, it does. Uh, yeah, so, it kind of does. Uh... Yeah, but it's a cool name, dude. Uh, because uh, I like the names overall, right? You got uh, Winchester up here. That's of course a cool, uh, cool name. You got Nice Stalker, uh, Javier. Uh, the name, your naming conventions are pretty good so far. Uh, who? Okay, so, so therefore Pretty that sure would bring us that. talking about names. What's the bad guy's name? Who's the big baddie's name? Okay, so, so this guy, the, the guy in the front, the um, the big guy that was in the front. Yeah, Winchester. Uh, that is. Um, oh no no, uh, I've sc- uh, scrolled down a little bit where it showed all the okay. the the yakuza guys. If you scroll down a little bit, um, this guy right here, the guy with the, with the big face and, and the. Yeah, I see it. This guy, the guy in the yeah. front here, uh, that guy. Yeah, he is. He's the. He's actually their brother. He's the um, the yakuza boss's son, and he's kind of in charge of this little this little mission right here. Um, mm. And his name his name is Ichiro. Um, Ichiro. Yeah. Ichiro. And then you have you have like the unknown, the guy with the with the guy with the green hair in the back. Mm. He's just like one of the the top. Uh, his one of his top. Um, you know, bodyguards or whatever. So and, they're, uh, they're those are bad dudes, Yakuza. So, uh, what do we know about them, Chester? Are they are they are they are they bad? Um, the it depends. It depends on what part of history or and the ones you're dealing with. In general, they don't cause much trouble at all for the average person. They more than they do. <laughs> well, they don't. They cause more trouble for each other, really. If you're not in that world, you're not in that world. That's the way the Japanese look at it. So. Uh, the yakuza don't cause much trouble at all, but that's that's not fun though. Uh, so let's go with movie yakuza, which yeah, I was dangerous. trolling. And then what well, there, you go, there you go. <laughs> they don't co- they don't control the under underground street racing and drifting scene. No, no. What? No. <laughs> Although there is a big oh, yakuza he... war going on in Japan right now. It's serious business. Yeah, uh, but they're uh, they're killing really? each other, right? They don't really deal. Oh, yeah, that's why like so... you need a big bad villain dude to pop up and start taking control of business like this yeah. guy. It's funny because even the go. news covers the Yakuza War. It's funny because uh, it was crazy. Think it'd be something they oh, wouldn't wow. talk about. But, uh, I, but yeah. I was saving up to come over there and join. <laughs> what? I don't think because I, it's, I, you I, don't I'm, the, I'm the Utah the Yakuza, DK. The, You're kind I'm of bored. The, the, the drifting <laughs> over here, so you know I gotta. 
I got to go over to Japan and represent, you know. That's funny. Yeah. No, just, so you, just so you know, Gil, though, uh, Ichigo sorry. means first son. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect then. <laughs> Dude, I can drift a minivan. Shit. Nice. I would <laughs> love to see Brad drift in a minivan, dude. That would be something to behold. I'd videotape that. We would have a live stream of that. That's <laughs> dude. If I could drift a minivan, yeah, I'd, I would. I would come over to Japan, be the DK. Yeah, there you go. I could do it. There you go. Cool. All right, man. Well, um, uh, let's get over here and let's uh, look at these perks you yeah. got going on. Now, uh, uh, we'll let uh, Denali take this. Uh, he's uh, really good at this part. So, Denali, go ahead, man. All right. So, we're looking at the feature Night Stalker for the Troops, $100. It gets you a set of uh, signed copies of four sets. So, I guess four books. Um. Sign for it, and it's to the troops, I believe. Yeah, will be sent to our troops around the world via USO. And you so get you get one deal. yourself, I'm assuming. Right. Yeah. Right, Gil. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get uh, the the back row get one one signed uh, set, and then uh, the other four sets will go to the uh, to the we'll mail them to the USO. That's cool, dude. Cool. Yeah, I, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of these uh, uh, Indiegogo campaigns that do that, that actually uh, help to send out because uh, we know from just all our uh, interviews and all the stuff we've done over the past uh, half a year here, there's a lot. Military guys love comic books, man, um, and uh, it's and it's also kind of feels a feel good thing to help out your troops. You know, I understand there are some absolute jackasses in America who are always saying something negative about the military, but the the real Americans amongst us are, are, appreciate their service uh and uh, i think it's a cool thing and it's a win-win so uh that's an awesome uh, perk dude oh thank you man yeah thank you uh like i said um uh you know we we're a military family so we you know we always want to give back to the community yeah. and uh when i when i when i first did the i released a beta version of of this of the first issue last year and um we took about we took a box of i had about 150 in there and we took them to the USO to, to they can hand out to the guys and you know when they're coming when they're coming and going from flights and stuff just to kind of give cool. them something to read. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is cool, dude. All right, well let's move down to the uh, start now. Here, uh, I'm assuming this is uh, oh that's kind of cool. Go ahead, Danelli. It's gonna be the ten dollars Ka Night Stalker print, a full colored eleven by seventeen Night Stalker print by Carl Altsetter. Yeah, Altsetter. And that's the one we're looking at up here, though. Uh, this one right here, right? This. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is yeah, the one with him, the one with him in the tenor. Yeah. You remember? You remember uh, Carl Alster? He worked on. Uh, he worked on Blood Strike back in the day for Rob Liefeld. Oh, oh, uh, right. mm. Yeah, he did Blood Strike. He did. Um, he did a series back in the day. It's called. It's called Deity, I believe. And, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yep. You remember Deity, and then. Uh, um, he's really cool. I, I found him on on um, I found him on uh, DeviantArt, and I just messaged him, and he was nice enough to you know to reply back. And I asked him what you know what his normal charges, what he usually charges for covers, and it was pretty reasonable. I was like, dude, let's let's do this. <laughs> well, dude, isn't it cool how accessible uh, our artists and writers are in the the comic book world? I mean, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, we've got next Tuesday. Uh, on this, uh, on our uh, Bugbear's Basement, we're doing a little bit different Bugbear's Basement, uh, guys, by the way, announcement. Uh, next Tuesday, we have Art T. Bear coming on the show, and he's going to give a full inking tutorial live, right? Mm. That's Art T. Bear. That is cool. That's yeah. living legend, right? And they're so <coughs> you accessible. You do it when I'm at work. Okay. All right. Let's see what it is. Oh, well, dude, <laughs> come on now, Brad. <laughs> but no, seriously, it, it, it's really cool how accessible these pros are, man. It, 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 I think it's cool anyway. I'll mull by yeah. myself, I guess. All right. Let's move on. No, <laughs> cool, but not the right time. Not the right time. Moving on to $15 per, which gets you a unsigned copy of the book. It's a two-packer, so you get two, the two books, I'm guessing, issue one and two. These are popular. This is digital, though, right? No, no, no. This is just regular. It's just, it's just, just a uh, comic, unsigned. So just the physical okay. copy. Okay, cool. It's just cool. a hard copy, yeah. All right. 
I see. And so, then the twenty-five dollars is a signed cop version as well. Yeah, I see. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, no. Uh, um, uh, you went with the uh, it's a very similar route that we went with the tales book. Uh, uh, you know, uh, just uh, keeping the prices uh, low as you can afford to keep it, and then uh, letting the shipping flow. Because some people go the other while the other way. They'll pad the price and make the shipping lower. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a it's a decision. I don't know which one's the right decision, but uh, it's a choice, I suppose. Um, cool. All right, uh, the fifty dollar one. Ooh, there's a Bowden print in here. Right, Mike Bowden, eleven by seventeen night soccer print, included with issue one and two. Now, how did nice. you get a hold of Bowden to do this, man? Uh, uh, same kind of thing. I, I think I found him on. Um, I found him not on not on DeviantArt, but I found him on i think it was facebook or something and i just messaged them the same way i just said hey you know big fan uh um you know um i got my I'm self-published comic book artist you know um in, indie creator you know what do you charge and and he he wanted to see it first so i i sent him a a pdf of the first issue and he hit me back and he said i like it i like the character he looks cool he's like i'd love to do a cover i was like awesome so yeah um that so is- and he did and he did it for a reasonable rate too. I was like, "Wow, you know, I was surprised." So, um, he just sent me a sketch. I said, "Yeah," and then we just agreed on it, and uh, and that's what we got. If you, if if you scroll down a little further, the the, the one that's in the uh, in the thumbnails a little, oh, it's an old uh, work in progress. But if you scroll down on the on the big pages, you can see the actual the finished colored one, colored by me. You, you scroll down. Stop. Oh, that one we saw. Uh, from the previous, yeah, that part. one. Uh, yeah, you can scroll it right there. Yeah, that's cool, dude. Uh, I do have a question from the Way chat good. for you. Uh, Eric Kick, uh, Eric Kicks, sorry, uh, says, uh, uh, how many troops are you trying to reach? Heading over to donate right now. Um, I would, I mean, as many as possible. Um, I would love to, uh, I'd love to, um, just get it out there and just see, see how they, how, how, um, a lot of the a lot of the people that buy the books at the conventions and stuff are, are military because they you know they like the the whole the tactical kind of look and all that and yeah, I tell yeah. them that it's a real I tell them it's a realistic you know it's more I, I've I've always found the um, ordinary people doing extraordinary things much more interesting than you know like a god or or you know monsters mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. kind of kind oh, of ordinary, yeah. kind of okay. ordinary things you know okay. like in we, their eyes you know? we can agree to disagree uh but um <laughs> uh, I, I, I do have a question you can see my pointer here on the screen and uh, i'm i'm looking at this uh this crown like symbol that you have on the chest uh can you tell us a little bit about that yeah for sure um i i want i was when i was coming up with the design um he didn't have anything and i was like i kind of want him to have some kind of a like a call like a like an insignia or a, or a logo and i always liked a crown i always thought it was kind of cool and i wanted to kind of try to incorporate it a certain way and um his by the way the the main guy his last name is ray javier ray like javier king um oh, yeah, oh, that's right. I, was, I was kind of like you know what the crown ray i said let me kind of make it small like it's kind of like a little badge on the side or it's not it's not it's not on the center of his chest or anything, so yeah, it's cool. I like it yeah. actually. It's you know, nice it, it it it's a it kind of is against the whole rest of everything else that looks there, right? Um, a tiara, for instance, is what a little girl would wear, right, to represent herself as a princess. And here you got a little crown on there, which which goes against the whole tactical feel of everything else. I think that the, the uh, it's it's kind of an irony or a juxtaposition. I think I think it's really neat. Going back to the troops real quick, let me just say this: when you are sitting there and you are a, a troop, not just at the airport, USO, and, and you're waiting, having something nice to read that's a lot more lighthearted. You know, um, maybe maybe your gadget is uh, depleted. You know, and you just want to have to have something more quiet. This is really good for that. Also get back with you you know it gets late and you know uh, you're supposed to be lights out and everything and so everybody's being more quiet and you just want to chill a comic book it really is is so much easier to, to do uh books are thicker you know you you, you got to get wrapped up into the whole thing sometimes you want something that is 
just short, just to look through and kind of relax. And a comic book is, is really a great medium for that. That's why you have so many of them buying it. And that's why it's so popular amongst the troops um, because it, it works well with the uh, kind of the society uh, or, the, or the, the culture they're at to be able to uh, get it quick and easy, read through and, and relax. And then, and then of course, uh, rack out. So. Not cool, dude. Uh, we do have another yeah, other cool. comment from the chat here for you, Gil. Uh, uh, <laughs> George Peter Gatzes says, do you accept groupie fans of your project? And is there anything to eat? Great work. Great art. <laughs> uh i don't know what that means but yeah yeah for sure there's there's always uh there's always food there's always food in the house <laughs> yeah there you go you gotta have food man i don't know, I don't know what he meant by that either but uh it cool george Thanks. george is hungry george you're, is you're hungry, asking man. his you're asking a hispanic latino if he doesn't have food in that house oh is that it <laughs> yeah well, it's funny, you know, we, we do have that image, right? Uh, but uh, I, I, it's like, why do we have that image when any house is kind of like that? <laughs> I mean, everybody's house is like that. Right. Uh, but it, that is funny. Um, I don't know if George was thinking that far ahead of it, though. But uh, anyway, Denalia, we have another one here at $75. It has a T-shirt involved, which is cool. Yeah. Which is, yep. Yeah. It's signed copies, the poster of... Uh, that we talked about and you know the two issues so Sweet. it's pretty good Ooh, we got and then the 150 here. you get yep yeah, you get uh sketch covers so it's gonna be pre-printed and you get drawn by the uh guests right here um is there any limitations on what you're looking uh what they can ask for for those sketch cover um or is it like it's just like a headshot or a head bust or something simple uh it it depends if if they get the the one the 150 tier that that's just for the front the front uh you know the front part of the uh, of the sketch cover um and those the, mm -hmm. for this the front part i usually limit it down to like a head uh like a bust or a, or a headshot um but there's also the, the next one down is a 275 one is i'll i'll do I'll do an actual uh, wraparound cover for the for the sketch covers for for that tier, and oh. that'll be like you know something a little more you know a little more um, original. Could I could I get an overhead shot of the uh, D Day on the beaches of Normandy? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, man. I could I could do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know you got to be careful because uh, that would take a while. Uh, but do, the, do yeah, a double book yeah. spread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, double yeah. book spread back to back, like put both books like four pages wide. Yeah, that'd be, that would be cool. Uh, you're giving people ideas. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. Don't listen to the idiot behind the curtain. Yeah, don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, now, uh, you got a couple bigger ones too. There's a $500 one here. Oh, this is an original page yeah. of art, I think. Yep. And you see, limited to 10, original art will be distributed page by page in the order of the backing to the backers of these tiers. You'll also receive a signed comic book, uh, two packs of so issue one and two, plus print, plus T-shirt. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, here from the chat, we have Tiffany Nicole. And uh, she says, is your first book on sale at any of the comic shops or just online? Um, I do have, I do have, uh, there's my, at my local shop, it's called, uh, Toshi station and they have, um, uh, the, fir the first issue uh, of Night Stalker available there. Um, but other than that, um, I just, I just, I just do them at the shows at the, um, the comic cons and, and all that stuff. That's where I usually do my, most of my sales. Yeah. There you go. I guess, yep. I guess you have to call Toshi. Is it Toshi station? To uh, yeah, Toshi, Toshi Station, like Star Wars, where you get the, the power converters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, it sounded like it, and I wanted to be sure. I wasn't <laughs> sure. So ask the station if they mail it out to you, do online, and buy it from there, if you're interested. Okay. And then you get the $1,000 tier, mm -hmm. which is a double original art shown in the thumbnail. Plus the two issue book, plus the print, plus the t-shirt, and it's only limited to one. 
Oh, wow. That is a cool. And yeah, because it's only one, it's the original page, right? And this is a side by side. This is a side by side uh, uh, page in the book, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the originals. One of the other, yeah, the um, yeah. it's a cool look. Sorry about too. that. Yeah. No, I love, I love oh, this page. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, um, I am curious, uh, your book, is it going to be uh, saddle stitched or uh, perfect bound? Um, for right now, uh, it's going to be saddle stitched, but if, uh, some of our, our, um, some of our stretch goals, um, there is one, I think if we get to, um, I think 12 or, or, or 15, uh, we want to do a, um, a perfect bound and, and just combine, combine the two books into one. So it'll be like a volume one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Cause my originally I thought, uh, cause, uh, you know, a project I'm working on has a very large book and I thought, oh, we got to go for perfect bound. No choice. But I found out you can actually saddle stitch up to a very large uh, book. Actually. I didn't really? know that. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Um, yeah, no, it is because it, it, it makes it much cheaper um, for the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, publication costs and stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, all right. Well, we're at the end of that. And, uh, uh, yeah, guys, this is a fun project. Uh, like I said, we'd already looked at this before, and we're, we're loving it. I mean, it's just fun. Look at it. It's a fun book. It's uh, very stylistic. Uh, the Gill has come on here and very, uh, I would say, very eloquently laid down exactly what his story is and what he's doing with it. It's quite clear. Yeah. And uh, that is a cool thing. So um, definitely, guys, go over and check this out, and um, you know, uh, be, you know, back it. I mean, we got a lot of projects going on over here, and uh, we need to support them as best we can. And uh, this is a good one, guys. Uh, let's see how we're uh, doing here. Or if you can't back it, share it, mm -hmm. uh, because That's I'm right. looking at the pages, and he has about nine nine days left to make the ten thousand dollar goal. Yeah. So yeah. You know, if, if you can't back it, share it to your friends, share it to other people who would probably be interested in, in this story and help them out and, you know, get some comics to the troops as well. Absolutely. Uh, Jesse Miller at the Crown's Nest says uh, it's available on IndieCron.com. Uh, that will bring you to the comic. Uh, the sub page for the comic will uh, uh, with a link to the Indiegogo. That's right. That's exactly how we got here, Jesse. Uh, Tiffany Nicole says, hail Gil. Well, there you go, Gil. Uh, Air Kick says, love the book. Yeah, it is cool looking. Yeah, you're getting some love over here. So, uh, yeah, guys, go definitely check this out and back this book. All right. Now, uh, Gil, uh, thank you very much for coming. Is there anything you'd like to say? Any departing words? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, again, Chester, thanks for having me on. It was, um, no thank all you guys, uh, Brad, uh, DeWolf, Delani, thank you very much, guys. Uh, it was really cool, cool chatting with you guys. You don't really have to go, though. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, no. I'm just shifting um, gears here. All right, yeah. um, and and yeah. I just want to thank all the the community, uh, you know, the Comics Gate uh, for, you know, for helping promote and uh, just like you were saying, just help spread the word and um, helping us get these books funded so we can, you know, we can show the big two that you know we, you know, we want we want good comic books, man. You know, it's it's sad when you got to you know, kind of go out of your way and create your own book to, to satisfy the, um, what satisfy what DC and, and Marvel can't, can't do for you. You know? Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's a very fair point. Uh, it's Air sad, kicks. but it, it brings opportunity to us. You it know? does. Right. It does. Right. Yes. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it definitely does. Um, and like I said, again, just thank you to all the, the people who've, who've backed us so far and for the people that are still kind of not sure, um, just, you know, Check out the video. Um, give it a read. Read the story. Um, you know, uh, I, I I really want to I want to create the best book I possibly can uh, for for the backers and for the readers because uh, they deserve it. And it's a book that that I want to see done too. So that's why I'm I'm, I'm making it happen. Oh, yeah. So I thank you all very much. I hear that, dude. Uh, Air Kick says, I'm backing it. Thanks. So there you go. You got a backer right there. <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. <laughs> uh, I would make one little suggestion, though. Uh, I like the page. I like what you got going on. Uh, but I would might suggest moving that video down into the body uh, of the, the page and here putting a really good uh, selling point shot uh, at the top. Uh, because actually you can uh, uh, actually fill this space a little bit more than you you have got it filled with a with an actual still image, right? 
Um, I would suggest mm-hmm. putting some really, you know, really uh, uh, catch the attention uh, a piece of art from the project. Put it right up here and just move that video down into the body here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Chester always says that. I, do. I happen to agree, but he does. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because statistically, we know uh, from because Kickstarter uh, uh, with board games, particularly, uh, there's a long history over there of knowing what works and what doesn't work. It's trial and error, right? And uh, so there's been a lot of, uh, you know, statistics created over there to try to understand how best to sell a product. And uh, during the, in those statistics, it shows very clear that most, the vast majority of people don't look at videos at all, right? Uh, Which is unfortunate, but most people don't. Uh, Having a video is cool, uh, but uh, what you really want here is something that's going to catch people's attention. Right. Because the video, because I don't know why it's just, uh, but the video all can even put people off a little bit. Uh, So uh, having that video down below in the body, having it available for those who do like it. uh, And but yet having up here some nice, really eye catching uh, piece of art from the project. uh, It just seems to be statistically better. So cool. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, um, this is my first time doing it. So I'm I'm learning as I'm going as well. (laughs) Dude, we all are, man. We all are, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Jesse says that uh, Night Stalker is high T with a new Mutants 98 homage cover. Yeah, yeah, it is. Actually. Pretty true, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, all right, so what we're going to do, guys, of course, we're going to shift over to the uh, comics news today uh, section. Uh, so, Gil, you are more than welcome to stay with us and uh, uh, give your opinions on the various news pieces we're going to look at, uh, uh, of course. And if you do have to leave, please, you know, just feel free to do so. But uh, we'd love to have you take, stick around. But we are going to shift over to that, guys. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for coming, Gil. Everybody go check this out. And, uh, yeah, let's get right into the news. Now, we got some interesting things to talk about. I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of wondering, where should I start? Where should I start? Should we just be shocking right from the beginning? No, I think we should. I think we should. We're going to be shocking right from the beginning. This dude has an opinion. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, dude, Ali. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna, <laughs> Brianna Woe calls for government legislations in response to negative Captain Marvel review. As people would know, and Chester could probably testify, Brianna Woo mm-hmm. is one of those opponents of gamer gates who's who she said has brought down yeah well this dude right here and understand if he was just a normal person who was a transgender i won't no happy to no problem calling him she or he whatever they wanted to be i don't care about that uh but this dude right here uh this dude (laughs) is one of the main liars that shifted uh the comics uh, excuse me the Gamergate issue which was really about honesty in in uh, news journalism is where it would have started as and shifted it into you hate women and transgender transgender came out of nowhere by no. the way no one had even mentioned the word you always can't even find it mentioned right but this is one of those dudes that made Gamergate an actual thing then this dude went and ran for uh, office thinking they would actually be elected but hey they elected Cortez. So I don't know. I don't know. America's lost his damn mind. Uh, but um, and then this dude has more opinions now because you know Captain Marvel. Re- you know. Sorry. Yeah, I watched the inter- I, I watched the interview. That interview and mm-hmm. God, I was like, Are you serious? Yeah, so have I. yeah it's ridiculous. Like... Yeah, and the yeah. interviewer fed the whole thing, right? Oh yeah, softballed oh. everything. Yeah. Like, didn't challenge a point of view at all. Not once. You know, if you're going to have government legislation that does respond to these negative reviews and tries to take them down, what I would, what I, this is what I would suggest. I would suggest going to all the newspapers to where if people have editorials or other reviewers as well that are also bad, or maybe even books, books that have um, certain uh, subject matter in them Mm -hmm. to take them all out, stack them up and burn them. Mm. Yeah, Mm-mm-mm. I mean, there's not much to really. We don't have to go over what uh, what was said here. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, the only thing it's really to take from is, is this person thinks you sh- that uh, we should actually legislate people from having an opinion, uh, which is nothing new, right? Uh, that uh, as soon as that Orte- Ortez girl got elected in that uh, ridiculous uh, New York uh, constituency, uh, the Democrats have shifted themselves so hardcore over to this uh, identity politics and socialism uh, that uh, this is the normal thing to say. I mean, when I was Wait, young, you mean fascism? 
you know, well, fascism, socialism, Marxism, you just call it, you know, whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay. Uh, but right. um, uh, the, when I was a kid, this right here would be denounced as socialism. And now it's just Correct. a normal thing. It's ridiculous. And this yep. dude here is going to uh, has has threatened us once again with running uh, for the House of Representatives in 2020. Um, so Larry it's like, Flint would be rolling over in. Yeah. Huh? Is, has he died yet? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, but let's assume one. he's dead. Best oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's better for the story if he's dead. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I sorry for the politics. Because normally I I could care less what people do, man. I don't care what people do in their bedroom. Why would I? I don't care what you do. But this this is a nasty human being, very nasty human being. And dude, you're not passing at all. That is, you're not selling that. You're not. You look like uh, uh, John Lithgow. I mean, come on. John Lithgow yeah. would do better. Oh, God. I'm sorry. That's an insult to the actor. I love yeah, John. Please. Oh, he's awesome. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So that's what I'm saying. Don't insult why, him. Why are you hurting John? Because exactly. what John do to you? Am I exactly. wrong? Am I wrong? Take a look. It's John Lithgow yeah, in drag. Don't. Still. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Um, I have to say, don't if insult. you do like John A uh, young Lithgow, John Lithgow. Uh, yes, yes. If you do like John Lithgow and you like to see, he's in so many cool things. But I actually think his absolutely best performance ever of all time actually is in Buckaroo Banzai. Um, he plays, <laughs> of course. No, dude, of course. It sure. is so good. It is so good. Uh, if you haven't seen that, just go watch it just for John Lithgow. I mean, of course, it's got Peter Well. I mean, that it's got uh, Goldblum in it, and that is a killer movie so, anyway. But just for John Lithgow, it is worth it because, damn, that guy kills it, dude. Uh, anyway, sorry. That's a tangent. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Does anyone else have something to say about Brianna Wu wanting to legislate away uh, negative uh, uh, opinion? Well, isn't his name Brian? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, uh, but uh, I'm kind of had enough of this this fella, uh, because he's been making trouble for a long time now, and and it's Probably all does. nonsense. It's all lie. I mean, if he had an actual point, fine, we could argue the point, but he doesn't. It's just about lies, and uh, the end justifies the means. I'm just sick and tired of this guy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I get you. Anyway. Um, but let's move away from that before I actually do a real rant. Uh, oh. Dude looks like a lady. Um, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Danelli. So, CI, uh, C, let me, let me start again. Warner Brother CEO Kevin uh, Su, uh, Sujihara mm -hmm. has a sex scandal mm -hmm. involving with this aforementioned actress, mm -hmm. uh, Caroline Kirk. Mm -hmm. Um, who were sexually involved, and there's been memos and text message, you know, trying to get her cast, ironically, in Supergirl. <laughs> Supergirl. As Supergirl so, or just in Supergirl? No. As Supergirl. No, Brad, Brad, oh. be good, Brad. Be good. What? Be good. Uh, I would no, like her Supergirl. better as Supergirl. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Um, and, and I find this this actress uh, is kind of interesting face uh, because mm -hmm. she is uh, – because we, we just uh, – I've mentioned this before. We, we came out of the horse face girl phase, and we're coming into the iron jaw girl phase, right, uh, as far as what Hollywood <laughs> prefers. Well, that's fine. Like Josh. Okay. Uh, well, hey, a lot of people like that. I have no problem. I'm not, I'm not mocking Brie that. Larson, yeah. Well, Brie, Brie Larson is the iron jaw uh, phase, and a lot of people like that. That's cool. Uh, I'm just saying that this girl is interesting because she has the horse face going on and the iron jaw going on. So she's almost like the perfect transitional uh, phase girl, I think. Yeah, but um, if you can you can compare her to the actual Supergirl on the side right over there because there's an ad. Yeah, I page. see that. Yeah, I prefer yeah, this and one. Actually, she's prettier. Yeah, I think yeah, I think she'd be better as Supergirl. Yes, Jesse, that's exactly what she did. And here's the thing. It's interesting because they're showing this as a scandal. Uh, because if you read the article, there's no scandal here. Uh, this older dude met this younger girl. She had sex with him because she wanted something and she didn't get it. That's not a scandal. That's a, uh, that's a hey, you, 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 you made a run for something and you failed a girl. That's the way it is. Right? Well, like there's a no casting couch? Here. Huh? Like a casting couch? Oh, yeah, it's totally yeah, no, it, it, Well, it seems more involved than a casting couch, but uh, it seems like it was an actual relationship. But uh, still, I mean, there's nothing scandalous here. She wasn't underage. Uh, she got into the relationship with him. They had a relationship. Now, she was looking at getting something out of it, um, and, uh, you know, and, but she, and she didn't. Uh, but that's not a scandal. That's just a relationship that, you, you, that didn't pay off for you. 
Uh, you know what I mean? It's it's weird to call it a scandal, I think, because there's nothing scandalous about it other than that she's a whore. You know, maybe she's the scandal. I don't know. Nothing wrong no, with he's that. in trouble because of the Me Too Yeah, but movement. that's nonsense. This is not anything Me Too. She made that yeah, decision. Yeah. No, that's what the narrative of the media is putting it out. That's, that's a scandal. Yeah, that's nonsense, though. That's nonsense because <laughs> some of the Me Too stuff is real deal. I mean, you know, Weinstein thing yeah. uh, is real. And I'm glad that that Italian actress went to the cops immediately because a lot of them don't. But she did. And good for her. Right. Because that's really you shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. that's nonsense. Right. Uh, but this isn't a scandal. Right. This is, is this is just a choice. <laughs> right? A choice that she regrets. Yeah. Wow, yeah. she, it didn't pay off, right? And it might simply yeah, yeah. be he wasn't in a position to make it pay off, right? Hey, Manny, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Manny. <laughs> Is Manny in here with us? He jump on? Yeah, yeah. He's in the well, chat. He... Oh, I see he's in the chat. Yeah, he's in the chat. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, there's not much to this really beyond that. It's just uh, uh, here's a more uh, distance look at her where she's a little bit younger or kind of I don't know if she's younger, but she's she got that makeup caked on, and she ooh, I'm thick. They got a bony knees too. I'm so, thick. my bony knees. See my bony knees. Sexy. Okay. So this actually does go back to the original thing uh, that we've been talking about too, and that is the fact that we are saying you just said it that this isn't that big of a deal. Something no. happened. There was some sex involved. There was maybe some promises, and and it didn't go her way. And so now they're calling it a scandal. While we, on the other hand, say, well, yeah, but that's just what what people are doing in their own relations. Really, that big of a deal. No. Which means that the the left wing is now more uh, puritanical. We keep saying this <laughs> than Weird, us, right? the conservatives. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. I was looking at Nick W in the chat. Me too. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. No, no, bad Nick. Right. No, it was awesome. Yeah, but it's uh, um, yeah, no, it, it's weird because I don't care what you do in your bedroom. I just don't. They care. do. But you were they asking now me last care night, what people are doing. Hey, Brad, that's supposed to be secret. What are you doing, Brad? Oh. Sorry, Gil. I do okay, apologize, Gil. Okay. He's our guest, and I'm sure he's shocked and <laughs> over there. And uh, you know, it's, yeah, that's why he's and, muted. Yeah. 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 He's like, oh my <laughs> God, these, these guys are people idiots. I came on with. Uh, but, <laughs> but I mean, I just don't care. <laughs> and this is such a non-story. But it's all about she didn't get what she wants, so she wants to get attention because now maybe somebody will sympathy give her some kind of job, and that's what it's coming down to, right? That's what she's doing here. Uh, right. But it's like. Um, you know, I mean, they're mm -mm. they're looking to see if it's sexual, uh, sexually impropriety in the the fault of the CEO, because uh, he should know better. No, to you know, be promising and, thing. You know, and, you know. Here's the thing: by doing this, and there, there a lot of the, I would say the majority of Me Too is this kind of nonsense, which is really unfortunate because the actual stuff uh, is being buried by this nonsense, right? Uh, but my, my, here here's the thing: uh, no one made you do nothing, girl. The whole casting couch thing, once again, that is a choice. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you're offended by it, go and tell the world, right? Um, and, uh, it, it, and and the thing that's funny with Hollywood is they keep wanting to point fingers and blame, but it's Hollywood's fault. This is your culture. True. You guys made that. It has nothing to do with us. You know? Anyway. Uh, okay, so a sad little whore is upset and wants to get free stuff. Well, okay. Shocking. Uh, next... Oh no. <laughs> the X Men's new retro comics dive deep into Marvel Legacy. So basically, they're trying to play on our nostalgia because what's a surprise? The sales are falling down drastically. What? So how 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 best no you way. get you know you know how how best to get uh fanboys back involved by putting them in the old uniform colors. Hey guys, look they're, they're almost exactly like the old uniforms. Remember the good old days? Remember when they were actually X-Men? Mm -hmm. And, you know, not what it was. Well, come and buy it so we can keep, you know, getting your money and telling you crappy stories by tarnishing the costumes. No, good. Yay! I, I, and I hate this uh, uh, Cyclops here. I hate it. Uh, Jesse Miller at the Crown. I don't like says, his face. No, I don't like it at all. Um, the uh, says that uh, that's called being a whore, and you're supposed to get the money up front. Ask Bree. 
<laughs> oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, okay. Uh, George says, do you remember Bob Baker? Prince is right. Uh, screwed one of the uh, hostesses. No one cared. <clears throat> Price no, is right. no oh, yeah. Yeah, no one, no one, uh, no one cares. Bar- oh, Bob Barker uh, from the from the Price is Right screwed one of the hostesses. Hostesses, no one can. Now, matter of fact, I think he was older when he did that. And I was kind of like, you go, Bob, you go, Bob, you neuter and spay those cats, man. You're good to go. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, uh, but uh, I don't know. Bring it back to classic uh, uniforms. Is the, what the article's about? I mean, cool, I guess. Uh, I like this much You're better than to... the top one. Is there well, a reason? I just, just trying to get tr- more money, dude. Just trying to get money. I mean, they're rebooting the X Men. They're getting the old characters back. They're getting rid of all the new characters. They kill the SJW <laughs> versions that they've been doing, and they've been putting them in classic. To this is on the right low- track. No, no, they are lower. It's a law. It's a law. Remember how they do it. Yeah, Look at the Jim Lee stuff, dude. This is cool. No, scroll up, scroll up. Look at this. Look at Cyclops. He still is wearing. The, he's wearing his old costume, but he has yeah. his silver band. Look at um, oh, Wolverine. See, he's all brown, and he has his current claws and stuff. It's just a setup. It's it's a setup for. He's like, hey, we got you back, suck us. And now we're going to go back with crappy stories. It's just a gimmick. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, and, and honestly, Don't out of all the, the nonsense that's going on in Marvel, the uh, uh, the X-Men has suffered the most. I mean, they really have. Um, uh, some of, We can find some bright spots here or there, uh, but the X-Men have really suffered. Uh, and it's really unfortunate. So, <laughs> I don't know. I like uh, Jim Lee's stuff. <clears throat> I don't mind it, but uh, I get your point, Denali. Uh, Jesse is you now know, apologizing to Gil, I think. Gil, this is for you. Uh, he says, I totally forgot that you read all the comments. My bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it is interesting that you, you say that the, 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 it's the X-Men that have taken the, the worst brunt of this because they yeah. were yeah. the epitome of the outsider social class. Yeah. yeah. Trying to fight the that, diversity, yeah. yeah that concept sure. that that they were still part of humanity and not apart from it, and so now they're the ones that have that have taken the backlash against that and and have been destroyed by SJW politics well, and be yeah. and dehumanized. Yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, Fantastic Four too. I mean, they they got hurt real bad too. I would say those are probably the two worst. True, yeah, but the Fantastic Four was had more to do with uh, Pearl Mutter uh, not wanting to give even a an iota of anything over to uh, uh, Fox, mm-hmm. um, and, and of course it affected the X Men in that way too. But uh, but no, I get you yeah. saying yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, George Gatson mm-hmm. says, uh, "What's in what's in the outfit pouches? Did they re- ever use whatever was in the pouches?" Well, hey, you know, a superhero costume doesn't have pockets, so pouches just make sense. And you know, the early nineties, yeah, that's where he keeps about the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. His you know, well, Cyclops uses window cleaner. Tic Tac. He's got Windex. That's right. Well, That's he, has right. A, he has his glasses for night. You know, got to have your license in there. Yeah, yeah, you got to have your 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 backup spectacles in there. Power you know? bars, yeah. you got to have those. Got to have. Those. Here's the, here's the thing yeah. about the costumes, Condoms. though. You have to have a story base, right? Mm-hmm. It's not you. Just don't give me a gimmick. I, I I need to know that there's a reason that the characters say, "Hey, we need to go back and get these old costumes and put them on for whatever reason." That didn't make sense. Yeah. I'm Are sure there, yeah, like, story going back in time or anything? Does it say anything about the story? I no. Uh, th- this is just oh. uh, yeah, yeah. Denali's right, but I, I, I do like uh, Lee's design so much better than uh, Liefeld, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, now I do remember Mike Miller did that uh, in his um, Injustice. Uh, he actually brought Harley Quinn in. And he had they created a whole reason why she was in the old uniform, right? And that's kind of clever when you do like that. Uh, but I mm-hmm. didn't. I don't think uh, I saw anywhere in this article that they're doing something clever like that. Did I miss uh, miss that, Denali? No. No, yeah, it's no, just uh, they just for us. It makes it's not it's not sensical, yeah. Yeah. Did she have a lot of pouches or bulges? Well, okay, we're not going to get into the bulges. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> um, uh, Jesse Miller says, uh, The X-Men was my favorite comic. At this point, I wouldn't even care if they made a movie. I switched my allegiance to Comics Gate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Jesse Miller continues, and he says, George, I think that's where Wolverine used to put his cigars, or his cigarettes, who you said, but I think he was a cigar smoker. But uh, either way, yes, probably true. Zippo. Yeah. But I don't know. Did, did Wolverine have pouches? No, Wolverine doesn't have. Uh, pouches. No, no, yeah, the other never had a pouch. Yeah, he's he not. keeps he's him in his pouches. boot. Yeah, he'd rather. Yeah, he keeps him in his boot. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd rather be naked, uh, because it's you know it's a uh, cost effective because he, he I mean, <laughs> can you go a comic without Wolverine losing his clothes? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's move on here. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. It, uh, I'm sorry. Are we going to talk about something oh. that is Captain Marvel related? Denali. <laughs> yeah. Sci-fi wired. Danny Ruff admits to create a positive review in order to maintain access while discussing Captain Marvel's Rotten Tomato controversy. And thank you, Danny, for telling the truth that we all knew that the, you know, all these sites are giving positive review, even though it's not a good movie. It's to just maintain access because, you know, if you tell bad reviews, you'll lose your access, yep. your passes, and, you know, you won't be able to talk to the stars anymore. Yeah, no. It's yeah, just unfortunately, like, that's yeah. true. Yeah, well, it's just like everything else, right? I mean, it's just another thing that is broken. The system is broken. Uh, of course, they're going to have to say nice things, or otherwise, they can't keep keep yeah. doing what they're doing and get fun things and money, right? But I, th uh, but I think there's going to be a paradigm shift because people are tired of this. That they're not going to even care. They're going to be looking for those people that are telling the truth honestly and being mostly objective about what they're doing and transparent. So you'll, you'll be seeing less people. It, it will say, I don't care if you talk to the, to the actors because they're not genuine or behind the scenes because there's no sincerity. I'm going to look for the, you know, new site or organization or, you know, the people who are going to tell me straight, you know, is this a good movie? Is this a bad movie? And you're going to see that having access won't matter anymore. It's who's telling the right thing. That's what's going to be. And that's why there's a big kind of, you know, not some so secret backlash why all these journalists and these websites hate, you know, the YouTubers, you know, people that speak out like Midnight's Edge, like right. uh, exactly. Dr. Doom, Tim Pool, because Stuckman. they're telling you. Yeah, stuck, man. They're telling the truth. And, you know, and there's nothing that these uh, places can do to them, you know, besides, you know, taking them offline. But that's right. Yeah, because the they, they find money from somewhere else. So therefore, they can give an honest right. money. As a matter of fact, that's what makes them their money by being honest, right? Uh, which is a much better format. Exactly. Of course. Right. Yeah. So when. So I see that going from the wayside as they continue on. So it's not even going to matter if you're going to have access if nobody cares. Yeah. It's like we want the truth. We don't want pay shills to keep telling us what we want, like or not. Well, uh, okay, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit because even though that is what we want, that's not what we're going to get. There way, there's, there's way too many people in this entertainment machine like – even if all the current, you know, uh, movie reviewers stood up and say, "No, that's not what we're going to do anymore," other people will come in and fill the vacuum, and and be that voice so they can have access to the stars and have access to the movies and pr push their own personal agendas. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to take a lot harder um, uh, or a lot more of something to make it change. And well, uh, with the amount of um, money involved and worldwide appeal of uh, of everything, it's gonna it, it's still gonna stay the same. It's still well, stay the same for a while. I, I would just point out a lot of those sites that are going for access are actually laying off a lot of their staffs. Yeah, so that is true. You know, I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, uh, like I said, I, you're probably right. It's not gonna be changed overnight. But I think there is a shift happening, you know, like a glacier. It'll, it'll come. It's, it's not going to be like a snap of the finger, but it will come. <laughs> because, you know, 
Yeah, well, I yeah, wish we had uh, that. That'd yeah. be nice. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Joel Miller happening. over here says, uh, I backed that Handyman comic this morning. Uh, it's his second go at it with way better art. Looks amazing now. I agree, dude. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, this is something we've been talking about for a while. But, but in the end, right, when it comes right down to it, who is the best critic? Mm -hmm. You are. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, whatever. Uh, let me see here. Is there anything uh, we need to jump in here real quick? Uh, maybe. Uh, oh, this one's actually kind of fun. Let's do something fun instead of uh, heart cracking, depressing, <laughs> stupid Brianna <laughs> Wu. Hey, go ahead. Suicide Squad 2 lineup includes Shark, uh, King Shark, Peacemakers, and more. Well, that's cool. It is cool. Yeah. This is, uh, this uh, I would love to it, see. It's cool, cool. Yeah. I want to see King Shark on the big screen. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. Well, at least we had him in a small. Piece. At least we had him in a small screen. Yeah, I think this week wasn't it King Shark versus Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and I th I hope that uh, I hope that this next film they just they try to make it more, more fun. Uh, I think they tried to reshoot it into being fun, uh, but uh, it mm -hmm. didn't. It just didn't work it, it, because they didn't start that way. They were trying to do grim dark, and then they were like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" Because uh, Batman vs Superman uh, bombed so badly, they went and made those shifts, and um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, uh, I just hope they go pure fun from the beginning. Uh, and uh, make a simpler story, man. The Suicide Squad is not save the world epic uh, fighting gods like they did in the first one. It's more street level. Bring it down. Make it simpler. Make it fun, right? Uh, you know. Well, mm -hmm. it, it was more because of the overwhelming positiveness of the trailer that people thought it was going to oh, it's gonna be like the trailers. Which, you know, rarely does that happen, unlike Captain Marvel, which, you know, proved to be true. To the trailer, sure, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Uh, but uh, you know, um, I hope I hope the second one is better than the first one anyway. Who knows? We'll keep our keep our fingers crossed. Uh, we know we don't have it's... Will Smith involved anymore. We might be getting uh, Idra Els, uh, uh, but what's his name again? It, Idra <laughs> something. Elba. Elba. Yeah, Elba Idris. Elba. Uh, did I get I got it? I did it so, wrong again. But anyway, that's And it's fella. villains. So it has to be gritty. They don't they don't care about the nicey nice stuff, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 like watching war pan war campaign. You expect it to be gritty. Yeah. Well, no, was that be. a little booster I heard in Chester's? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. I'm the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he picked it up from me. God. Uh, I don't know, man. I yeah. think you're taking it from him. No way, dude. Booster's uh, rubbing uh, off on you. Oh my Pretty God. Be, I, I, you know, Pretty soon you'll be oiling yourself which up. Which says eject on it, Brad, just so you know. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Go ahead, Denali. Uh, all right. There Next. she is. <laughs> all right. Captain Marvel's big twist will further enrage the film's detractors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. what may be the. Twist. Spoiler, dun, dun, dun. spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I guess it has to do with the cat. Doc <gasps> no, no. Is. No, it's a, it's a oh, triple, she, yeah. she, it's a she triple is, quintuple twist. Yep. She is Marvel. This is Marvel, this lady. And she She's is, also the brain, you know, the Cree, uh, the, the yeah. Cree uh, central brain. So, yep. Yeah. I. Oh. And she's a double agent. <laughs> <laughs> the black uh, band on my arm is getting tighter. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> because you know everyone cutting off that, circulation. Uh, yeah, because a lot of us thought that it was going to be uh, Jude Law it was going to be uh, you know Marvel, right? And then all of it started, <laughs> excuse me, uh, toward him being Jan Rog, right? Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. the, of course now we know that uh, uh, what do they call the the, the central brain? Oh, the supreme intelligence. There it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. but she's also ultra secret hidden twist at the very end that twists very secretly out of nowhere and surprises you. She is also actual Marvel, the lover, huh? Because what? no, because she takes on the form in one of her memories of uh, of Captain Marvel, you know, Marvel. Um, and well, but it, it's actually her, so well, and here's the thing the supreme intelligence takes the form. Of Marvel, who's supposed to be the form of Carol's mother. Dun dun dun. Um, 
So Captain Marvel has always been female. Always. You see that? You see well, they, they did, did say there? they were going to update in the comic. Well, you see what you see what they well, did I there, though, right? Right. They just mm-hmm. wrote out Captain Marvel completely. Just got rid of him. They had not. It's bad enough they killed him off in com in Marvel, but no, no. Now they've written him out of existence. The green and white tided <laughs> Cree. Uh, 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 we adopted him. He came here. He yes. said, "I'm going to help out you humans That's because right. you guys are something about you." You're a positive force in the galaxy. Uh, honestly, uh, why do I like? Do you know why I like Captain Marvel? Because he was cool. because <laughs> he because created Quasar. No he was yeah, the right. he was the protector of the universe prior to Quasar. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is getting right. personal now. You know, I've been right. backing. <laughs> Well, dude, I've been backing, you know, you know, you know what this, backing Captain Marvel. I've been trying hard here, guys. No, dude. You know what that this means? It means that Quasar is going to be the female version. Yeah, absolutely. If they, but, oh my, no, gosh. dude, well, they've been re, they've been retconning a lot of stuff recently, right? Yeah. The, and this is now you say, okay, this is the movie. It's separate. No, it's not, dude. They're no, doing, it's They're not. following this over in the comics. Denali's mentioned yeah. it, and they absolutely are. Yeah. They are literally just wrote Captain Marvel out of comics. No joke. Right. And yeah, that's, they killed and, men's egos in Guardians too. Yeah. Right. And yeah. He, the reason why, because this is Disney stating this. They don't want Marvel's lore. They want Disney's made. And what's Disney made? It's the MCU. And under Disney control. So they're reconning everything. Mm-hmm. This is the Hodo era. of the film. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah, and and you knew they need to have. They just can't have. They got to have some gen- gender swap, gender swap somewhere, because Captain, you know, Miss Marvel becoming Captain Marvel makes total sense. It's it works just fine, right? But they had to have that gender. Gen- they had to have it. They couldn't resist it. So here it is. I knew, and, yeah, and you know, know, it's it shocks me. But then then my brain is saying you shouldn't be shocked. You knew they were going to do it. Right? This is the first right. Marvel movie I've I've never been anxious to go see. Well, yeah, right. The first one. Yeah. It made twenty million dollars so far, so it's really you know doing well. It's gonna make less today. Uh, I don't know. I think twenty million on a what was that a Wednesday or a Thursday? It's not bad actually. Thursday. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's going to make but money. Here's, and burn. But here's the here's the thing: what's going on? Because they did a lot of issues. It's going to damp out Endgame because no, they yeah, it is because. You know, unless the rumors are true, they're going to be focusing on, you know, Captain Feminist here to be the one who defeats Thanos, you know, and it saves the day, you know, after Captain America does a sacrifice that, you know, doesn't do anything. This is Hodo, which makes which makes Captain Marvel the last Jedi, mm-hmm. which makes in-game solo. Yep. Yeah, no, it's really I don't know. I think I think in game is gonna be better than we think it's gonna be. Well we have uh, that leak like Captain Marvel. We have that leak that the last punch is is Brie Larson. Well Which no, no, I can care less change for. that. I hope they, they they're filming a second a second ending which yeah. takes out that. Oh really? Because of this. That. That's good then. And we also have we also have the Russo brothers in, in <clears throat> involved, right? The Russo brothers mm-hmm. did not want Captain Marvel involved in the first place. No, and so yeah. that's why she's was not in Infinity War. She was supposed to be in Infinity War, and they said no. We want to pay homage for the past ten years of characters that we have, and they pushed Marvel in this this sequence. So they said, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel comes out, then she can be an in game. But now they're looking at in game, and they filmed a, a a second possibility of an ending. In which she is not um, being the the big hero anymore. Damn. Well, so, uh, can we go down the rabbit hole just a little bit more? We can, sure. but Please. hold your so, thought. Okay. For, hold your thought. Well, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, because it has to do with in game and you know Captain Marvel and stuff like that. So there was a recent, uh, uh, I think it was on 4chan, uh, a theory about in game and possible spoilers. I'll give the warning now if you don't want to hear it, but. The one who uses the, because um, we all want to know who's going to use the gauntlet, you know, to to fix everything, and uh, everybody's pointing to Iron Man right now because 
if you notice in every film he, he's in, his left arm is hurting. Every film. The first the first hero, you know, we see in the you know uh, in the Marvel universe is Iron Man when he comes out. First shot is of his left hand. Every every movie, his left arm, left shoulder, uh, yeah. is always always uh, being protected and babied and uh, hurting. And so they're thinking that it's because he uses the gauntlet in his left hand to go back in time when he takes everything back to redo the Avengers uh, for the end. Wow. And that's so an that, that damage is, uh, you know, goes through all realities when you use all the gems. Wow. Now that shows incredible for, for, for thought on my, uh, Kevin Feige's part. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I wonder if yep. they really, really thought that far ahead. I mean, it feels like they did, though. I mean, if you look at how smoothly everything's flowed, um, mm-hmm. that's an interesting uh, theory. <laughs> but, you know, fan theories are often interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me uh, yeah, let yeah. me catch up with the chat real quick here. Um, uh, Model 3 says, I can't picture Bri- Brianna Wu's face without a boot print on it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, Nick W says movie is going to be trash. Um, I, I I really hope they pull it off, dude. Uh, Jesse Miller says uh, Will Smith sucks. He could <laughs> he could burn in hell for all I care. After he said Trump voters need to be eliminated. Did he say that? Wow. Um, goodness gracious, Nick W. Marvel sex change. Yep, there you go. Uh, JP four is here. He says, Oh, great, Captain Marvel. Um. Uh, let me see here. Uh, un- <laughs> Can't get away from unpersoned it this Marvel. Uh, MCU pulled uh, the same nonsense with the ancient one. Uh, true, they did, they did. But be to fair, to be that. But to be fair, that lady pulled it off pretty well. Uh, Jesse says, um, "Hey, what do you know? It's Mr. McCraig, the man with a le- uh, with a leg from uh, an arm and an arm for a leg. I don't know what that means." Uh, Jesse says, I'm not going to see Endgame. Uh, they could go F. Oh, well, try to keep the F bombs down a little bit, Jesse, please. Um, that's my Endgame. Okay. Mm, George says, uh, <laughs> believed in the Russo brothers. Uh, we have a uh, believe in the Russo brothers. Uh, we have to have hope. Ten years of awesome movies. Uh, they have to please the fans. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not going to bury it so far like that. Dazzler says, hi, Dazzler here. Well, hello, Dazzler. Nice to have you. Um, everybody's saying hi to Dazzler, please. You know, clap, clap. Wave that Dazzler. Uh, Nick W says 120, 130 million opening for Captain Marvel. Probably. Uh, Brie Larson will be even more insufferable. <laughs> you know she will, dude. Uh, well, I'm going after Veronica. Uh, see you. Uh, see you get Betty. I don't get the point, Jesse. But I, I miss things sometimes. Uh, nevertheless, guys, <laughs> that's where we're going to have to leave it today. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave you with a picture of Captain Marvel. Being a mm-hmm. woman from the very beginning, always. It's always been female, <laughs> just so you know, right? Uh, but <laughs> let me come over here and uh, switch this over so I can uh, come back and say our goodbyes. Uh, now, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, uh, we love having these conversations with you, and you guys are so interactive. Uh, I see a few new faces here today, which is always cool. Uh, thank you very much, Gil, for uh, coming on and sharing your uh, your project with us and sticking on through our our insanity. Um, and uh, thank you very much for coming. Any last words uh, you want to uh, tell people? And uh, also, uh, go ahead and uh, give people your links and such so they know how to get a hold of you, man. Cool, cool. Again, thank you for having me on, Chester. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and just, um, we got about eight days left. So if anybody's still thinking about backing us, you know, please consider us. It's going to be a great book, a lot of fun, and it's going to be a cool ride. So hope you guys, uh, decide to come on board with us. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Gil Rivera LA. I'm also on Instagram at Gil Rivera dot LA. And I got my Night Stalker number one and two is up on Indiegogo and IndieCron right now. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Sweet. All right, Gil. Thank you very much coming. And guys, uh, also keep in mind uh, that we have uh, George over here. He's got his uh, 
Joe King going on, and I think there's some other projects in there. If you guys got projects, just shout them out. Uh, don't worry if you drop links. I'll go ahead and put them through so you can do that. Uh, of course, we also have here, uh, three of us are part of the uh, Tales from Beyond the Gate uh, project that is going on in Indiegogo, which you can find through IndieCon, which, uh, IndieCon, which is our sponsor, of course. Uh, but uh, Tales from Beyond the Gate is an amazing uh, project. It's got 160-plus pages, a huge book. It's got uh, over 20 people involved in it. It's got uh, sitting at, what, 18, 19 stories right now now. Uh, of course, it's a horror anthology. Uh, amazing art. Uh, some pretty good writing, if I say, say so myself, which, you know, I will. Uh, and uh, But definitely go support us. We need your support in that project, guys. This is the first joint uh, you know, Comics Gate Umbrella project that's going on, and we really need you guys to help us get to that mark. Uh, so please go check it out and uh, support it. And if I could have one of my moderators drop that link as well, uh, Brad, maybe. Uh, and of course, Brad is also going to be dropping his link because his handyman is also out. Another great project. It is. Um, yep. And uh, tell him about that, dude. So uh, if you haven't heard what handyman is yet, it is about, uh, well, in essence, it's kind of like John Wick meets Home Depot, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, if if we want to just get to the, the real quick, you know, uh, you know, nit and gritty of it. But uh, it's about a guy though who um, uh, used to be a uh, former cartel hitman, uh, working for a drug cartel in Juarez, Mexico. Uh, he leaves the life for his family and uh, gets pulled back in uh, through other means uh, into the life. But he comes back, not for vengeance, but for, uh, to, what's the word, uh, issue justice to those who deserve it. So, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a good story about trying to redeem who you used to be and who you are and fighting for those who can't. So, give it a shot. No, so it is a good book, and I don't know why you keep fighting me on Mexican John Wick, because it's perfect. It's a Mexican John Wick. It's not handyman. Okay. I mean, it's not the the Home Depot John Wick. It's 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 a Mexican John Wick. Well, he doesn't use guns, so it's not just John Wick. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. He doesn't I, use I guns. Like it better because it's cool, dude. I, I actually like the character, dude. I think he's really cool. I yeah, like he is pretty fun. He together. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, definitely go check that out. And John Dillard is absolutely yeah. Please correct. give it uh, back. Yes, and uh, you know John <laughs> Dillard is cr absolutely correct. In 20 minutes, we have doing D and D, which is why I'm, I'm getting out of here now because I need to go uh, prep a little bit. Not not much. I'm kind of ready. Uh, but uh, uh, basically, if you go over to John Dillard uh, or Dillard Draws, which he changed the name, uh, he's trying to copy your Richard Myers. I hope it works for him. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, He's trying to game the system. He is trying to game the system. Uh, but uh, we are running <laughs> a D&D. &D, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm DMing it, and we're running a D&D &D thing over on John's channel. And uh, what we're kind of doing is well, we're, int we're introducing some people who never played before. So if you if you never heard of D&D &D and you want to learn about it, come over. It's a kind of a tutorial in a way. Uh, but we're also, eventually, we're going to be taking all the scary monsters that are uh, in the uh, horror anthology, the Tales from Beyond the Gate, and they're going to be facing them and stuff. So <clears throat> it's a... Uh... It's a fun little project we got going on, so come and support us there in 20 minutes. Uh, definitely check out all the books, uh, and please uh, put your money towards supporting this movement, uh, the indie revival, right? Uh, we're trying to take comics back, and the more noise we make, the more opportunity we get in the mainstream. Uh, different, uh, Some of the smaller uh, comic book companies and things like that. Uh, we've already made enough noise that we're getting interest from, like, say, Diamond Distributors who've been on uh, Brad's show, right? Uh -huh. um, that, that We're making noise. That's what this is about, is making noise. So keep putting your funds to it. Keep supporting it. Don't let the momentum die. Be part of this, right? Uh, but beyond mm -hmm. that, we I definitely have to go. So um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I really appreciate you, and I'm happy to have you guys here. And uh, as always, Denali, take us out, man. All right. Well, thank you, for everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Gil, for being our guest today. Join us for tomorrow for Bunny Vision Movie Night, where we're going to be watching John Candy Ensemble of Stripes. It's going to be fun. We're going to be watching, like, two hours. You know, even if it's just one person with us, we'll be watching it. And... Finally, Sunday will be the big show with Tin Foil Hat uh, Tin Talk. Tin Foil Hat TFT. Yeah, TFT is coming. Yeah, Ooh, not yeah. Is TFT conspiracy I, theories are live and real. They're real. Sorry. Bye, at, Dazzler. At 8 p.m. Eastern for both of them. So join us for that talk. 
come with your own theories and see if we don't get shut down. If they do, you know who it is. But as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. Namaste. Good to chat. <laughs> All right, later, guys. Uh, but and by the way, Dazzler, you need an E on the end of that bye. Just helping you out there. Later. Aloha. This later. is Fan Speak, a weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests. <laughs>